All right. We are recording. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Experiential Ed Blab. This week, we are blabbing about uh, name games and icebreakers, and we will see where the conversation goes from there. Um, as always now, it seems, my co-host Mandy is here, and uh, also we Sorry. have Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's great. Uh, and Goose is with us today. Also, thank you, Goose, for suggesting we do a daytime uh, blab along with a couple other people I see here, too. So, Well, thanks for doing it. It's just hard to, with family to do it all in the evening. Yeah. And, you know, the second I did it uh, day one, I got feedback going, oh, can't you do it at night? So we'll mix it up. We'll go back and forth. And uh, sure. um, actually, had somebody say, can I do the same one again tonight? And I would love that, but I do have some other things I need to take care of today at some point. <laughs> All right. Uh, and also feel free. So here's how for those of you that are new to Blab and this is your first Blab. Uh, let me give you a quick tour. Over on the right hand side is our chat. So anytime you have a question or you just want to make comments, you can go ahead and type in over there. For example, I'm going to go ahead and put in right now the, a link to uh, Blab etiquette. So those are kind of the uh, contracts. Yep. So, and uh, Mandy and I will be watching over there. I am getting a little echo. Uh, anybody else getting echo today? I am not currently just, getting echo. Okay. I just got it in your last set. All right. So, um, but we all have headphones on, so I'm going to assume that it goes away soon. Um, the other thing you can do with the, the chat over there is you can um, ask a question. Um, the way you ask a question, question is you type in slash Q um, and that slash Q. I just uh, you have audio, but here. no video for All me. Right. Well, that's why Mandy's co-host, because <laughs> she'll keep things going. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Oh, and that's new. If you do type in slash and it's the slash with the question mark Q, it actually lets you know you're about to ask <gasps> oh questions. Oh my gosh, so look at all week. those prompts there. That's amazing. Oh, I only got I would only got the one prompt. The I'm going to have to play with there's that. There's shrug. Later. There's table flip. There's light mode. There's dark mode. Wow. All right. I'm going to have to refresh in a second because I am completely frozen. Uh, but yeah, I'm thinking you, have audio, you guys can your still hear me, frozen. right? I love beta. Isn't it great? You get all sorts of new presents all the time. It is. <laughs> Uh -oh. Yeah, Ed, Ed needed to refresh oh, no. uh, because his video was frozen. So he'll be back. Sure. Yeah. And if not, okay. you know, I have coffee and, and we can chat. And <laughs> Two of us. It'll be great. We'll take Ed's uh, lab away from him. Ah, it'll be fine. So let's see. So, Lauren, do you go by Lauren or do you go by Lori? I'm uh, talking to somebody who's watching us right now. Ed Kaplan is back. All right. All right. So. Just type it in there if you feel like it, Lauren, because I feel like I should be calling you Lori, and I don't want to keep calling you Lauren if that's too formal for you. So just let me know. <laughs> All right. Thanks for holding the ship together there while I, I – the actual uh, – Chrome actually crashed on me, so oh, a little wow. bit more than a crash. Yeah, always lovely. Anyways, if you do that slash Q, I don't know if Mandy mentioned it while I was gone, it'll actually show up on the left-hand side if you look – Right now, there's a queue with questions. So if somebody asks a question, um, we can always post that in the open window so we can all see what we're talking about. And then last things up top here, encourage you all to tell a little bird. Uh, if you do have a following on Twitter, it does all the work for you. And um, away it. Wow, that was weird. I actually heard the little tweeting sound yep. in the background. So anyways, you can tell a little bird. <laughs> and uh, that'll push it over to Twitter and also tell Facebook and you can let everybody know on Facebook to come over and join us. So there's your tour of Blab. Question, Goose. Let's see. L looked like you had a question. What's that? I thought you had a question, so. Oh, I text while I'm on the Blab. Gotcha. So uh, the last thing to notice is props. This is not a contest, um, not a even contest. though I have six and uh, – Mandy has one, but she gave me all those props. Basically, props. Mad echo. Mad echo. Okay. <laughs> We're having a fun time today. It's okay. We're going to get on the topic here quickly. I'm going to see if I mute Goose. Echo went away from me. Is the echo still there for you, Mandy? Yes, echo's still here for me. Yes, echo. All right. So, Goose, the echo's on your end. 
if you can make sure that you've got your headphones in. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. All good. So anyways, uh, the All props right. are just, if you like what somebody's saying, it's a good way for us to get feedback while we're talking. Um, just kind of hit those little hands up in the air and we get props and uh, they aren't recorded and, um, you know, they're there. It's fun. So uh, thank you, Mandy, for telling Little Bird and let's get started here. So let's start off with uh, name games. So talking about name games and icebreakers, uh, of course, we always start talking from uh, a lot of our perspective here, which is the challenge course world. And when we're working with a group and we get uh, we meet a group. Um, these are some of the first things that we do. And maybe a little bit later on, we'll go into when we don't start with um, icebreakers and that, but that'll be a, we'll see if that topic comes up. But uh, last time we talked about contracts. So this time we thought uh, it was only right to talk about uh, some intro activities with the group. So let's open it up with actually first question. Do you guys start with name games or icebreakers? I use name games if it's a newly formed group, you know, mass camp coming together mm -hmm. um, or a, a group just coming together. But if they're established and I don't know their names, um, I tell them I'm not going to waste their time. Um, I'll just gather their names as they're talking to each other. Yep. Okay. So. I, you know, I don't always have an always, so <laughs> uh, it, it depends on my group for me. If I have a, a lot of times what uh, we end up doing at uh, one of the courses that we run is we do icebreaker warm-up games while we're figuring out if everybody has all their participant releases. Um, so icebreakers come first and then we do name games when we divvy up into our small groups. Um, but it, it depends on the group. I think a lot of times if the group has a lot of energy and uh, I don't have a high energy name game that I feel is good for where they're at, then I'll play an icebreaker first before I go into a name game. Um, but Sometimes name game first works and it's, it's all just reading my group, you know? Yeah. I think that part of one of the, yeah, that's, I'll go for it. Deuce. I was going to say, that's why I do uh, um, icebreaker activities is so that I can read the group, but also I'm, I'm using those to set a tone, especially when you have adult participants, you have people coming in guarded. They are afraid that they're going to be made to look stupid and so an icebreaker activity is a great way to show we're going to have fun, but nobody's going to be singled out, and we're all going to look stupid together. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, one of the reasons I was, as I was doing notes for today, and that's why I changed that uh, first question, is, um, you know, I used to traditionally always start with name games. And part of it was, Mandy, what you had mentioned, that it just didn't seem like I was getting the group energized enough. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually kind of boring in some ways. And so part of it was looking at the name games that I was doing. And again, coming out my first year, I was doing the, hi, I'm Ed. I'm going to be at a challenge taste challenge course today. And I'm going to bring excitement. Jeff, why don't you tell us what you're Yay! doing today? <laughs> and, you know, and one of the things it was that it, it also was extremely, uh, it took me years to realize, you know, even after I had dropped that game that I was starting off with like a mind uh, puzzle that actually was people didn't get it because it was you know use your you know if, for those that don't know what I'm talking about Jeff would have to say something that he's bringing to the challenge course today that starts with a J right and again if he didn't get it he was wrong we moved on to the next person here I am setting the group up with you know what I thought was maybe a little humorous in that but I'm really just ticking people off to start start the day um or you just know, putting them on the spot and making yeah. them feel a little bit nervous and anxious and then you sometimes. Get, like more people that know it, and you know, as that tide shifts, the people that really don't know it, if depending on their personalities and that, um, that can really be off-putting to be all of a sudden this new group that you're a part of today um, has an inside joke that you don't get. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that I found that I started doing over the years was icebreakers. Uh, and then it even morphed into doing a lot of pair and share activities um, where um, then yeah. in that real quickly introduce yourself to your partner. And I don't care if you already know each other, and know each other from first grade, act like you just knew, met each other for the first day. Again, trying to take that away. So if I'm embarrassed that I can't remember this person that I'm, I've been paired up with now, and maybe we've known each other since school started, but personal experience, I'm horrible with names. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I think that's again why I shied away from doing name games because I would watch other facilitators do the thing where name an adjective around the circle and then they would be able to name everybody. Bust out everybody's name. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do that. I, I just Ever? not once. No, I don't think I've ever been able to do it. And and I've co-facilitated <laughs> with other people that I've been put on the spot for. And I feel absolutely horrible because they're able to go around the circle. And I'm doing that thing where I start off right to their left so I can be the first one to go. Uh-huh. You know, I know how to survive. Um, I'm but, not but, energetic. <laughs> but your your group never calls you out on that when the, the person to your, the last person to your right goes, they say everything and then they go back to you and say, okay, now can you do it? That's why I, I never use that one. Yeah, because they are going to call me out. And also, I don't use it because I'm a big believer that I'm not going to ask a group to do something that I wouldn't do myself. Okay, so I have something to point out about that. Then if you were staring at a kid across the circle who was frozen and couldn't remember the names, what would you ask the group to do for that kid? Okay, going again that I this is why I don't use this. But here is what I have done in the past is I will bring up something along the lines of, you know what, today is about us working as a group. And so at any point today, we may find ourselves stuck. And when we get stuck, one of the things that is perfectly acceptable is for us to ask for help. And again, part of it is. Okay, freeze, going into freeze this, there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So why can't you model that for them as the last oh, person that goes? You are a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> no, serious. No, serious. Yeah, and I, I know I, I, I have done that. I have done that. Where if it gets back to me, I may even use that same spiel, and I may say, you know what? And I'm going to ask you guys for help. You seem to know now. I know that some of you have an advantage of knowing other people, but you know, I don't, and I can't remember everybody's name. So yeah, help me out. Uh-huh. But again. That's part of why I don't re- use it. But the other thing is, I have I know a, that I'm going to spend it spending, as we talked about last week with contract, I'm going to be spending a lot of time talking in a circle. I want to get them moving. So my technique yeah. is more icebreakers first. Yeah. Right. Yep. I just want to point it out. Modeling is good. Uh, one of the things I do <laughs> when I do name games is I establish a, a, a policy that during uh, low ropes team challenges, if somebody can't remember somebody's name, they have permission to actually pause the activity, go over, shake their hand, reintroduce themselves, and then get back to the activity. Um, and some groups will take advantage of that to make the activity easier for them, but usually they'll do yeah. it to actually learn the names. Yeah. I've actually done a lot with, um, and I started doing this after, um, I think it was I first saw Jen Stanchfield do formally at a conference, uh, Five Ways to Say Hello or any type of handshake activity. Um, and combining that with something that she said about processing in general, that, um, does good processing happen when a facilitator isn't there to hear it? And that's a whole nother blab we can talk about with processing. But one of the things I realized is that I'm not good with names. I've got my tricks and I have no problem going up and telling people, Hey, again, I'm Ed, what was your name again? So if I can get them paired up, like, all right, everybody, here's the, the, the lumberjack handshake. Now with your partner, get their name and talk about one thing that's an outdoor experience that you've had before. I don't need to necessarily be the one that has the names. I want the names. And Goose, as you were saying, I'll pick them up as they're talking. Um, but at the same time, I want to find a way that they can really solidify the names quickly doing something. And so I've even in most of my icebreakers, even if it's a, a uh, rock, paper, scissors kind of thing before playing somebody find out their name really quickly. So I uh, have to refresh. Mandy's gone. Oh, you're taking notes. I was writing a thought down for later because I like the flow of this and this thought doesn't necessarily fit now. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to put it in later. Yeah. So I like the question that we asked when we were doing um, the group contract blab and that's why do we do a group contract? Mm-hmm. So why do we do name games and icebreakers? Because that's something I think we've sort of fallen into this conversation, but what yeah. are our bullet points as facilitators? What are, what are our outcomes that we're looking for by even using these types of activities? What, what happens when we do names games? Icebreakers. Well, like I said, no, that's oh, it. sorry. Um, I like uh, mm-hmm. reading the group. I also like to um, disarm that mm-hmm. that caution that may be in a group. You know, um, 
a lot of corporate groups bring adults who don't want to be there. They feel like it's a waste of time. You're not going to make me look stupid. And so um, you know, something that kind of engages them in a fun way and disarms that, mm-hmm. that guardedness. Um, I think it sets yeah. it down for the day. Uh, to me, a lot of the intent is, is tone and the other intent. Well, yeah, I, I'm going to echo most of what you said, Goose, is that starting off, I want to get a read on the group. So mm-hmm. if we start doing, um, you know, evolution or morph, very quickly, I can see who's already ready to step out of their comfort zone, who's looking around like this is silly. Um, so a lot of mine is initial assessment, mm-hmm. but I'm also trying to set the tone of taking a step outside your comfort zone. I mean, if we look at, uh, you know, to me, the intention of an icebreaker is to get to know other people. Uh, I, I think the traditional sense is to learn something about other people, but I think that the other part of it is to break the ice where, you know, let's start to feel comfortable as this group. You're already in most cases away from your regular environment. Um, you now have this odd adult that's telling you that you're going to be spending the next four or five hours with them. Um, and you gotta, you gotta get some type of comfort. Zone odd adult. Mm-hmm. Were you guys laughing at this weird looking adult? <laughs> You said odd adult, not yeah. thinking, yeah. very odd adult. You know, and <laughs> so, uh, thinking of myself, <laughs> what have you had? <laughs> Me. You know, I, it's one of those things you don't have to be odd to do this job, but it sure helps. <laughs> um, you know, and we so are can, special people. <laughs> <laughs> so that. You know, speaking of, of, of our actually unrelated, we do have the open seat. And I know looking up that we have, um, you know, there's five of us that are on Blab that are watching. So I want to invite uh, anyone else to jump into that open seat also to put your two cents in. Um, and I also want to welcome, it looks like we have 11 people watching um, that are not logged into to Blab. So thank you guys for coming in and checking this out today. Um, again, it doesn't hurt. Was it pay- pretty painless uh, to set up the Twitter account, Goose? Yeah, I'm not tech savvy at all, and it just took a little bit of uh, googling and and figuring out. It took me longer to figure out how to do the Twitter account than to actually uh, yeah. get on the blast. So again, anybody out there, I'm going to put my um, email address in the um, the chat here, and you can always. After the blab, it's experiential ed at Gmail is the easier one. Um, and it's no E at the beginning. Uh, for those of you watching the the, the uh, replay, and I'm glad to, to help you walk you through setting up a Twitter account if you want to join us in the future. Anyways, back to intent. Um, the last thing I was going to add with that is that um, it really, I, I feel like I can't stress them enough of setting the tone. And I think that that goes back to my days of doing a lot of seventh grade groups where they're looking at me as teacher for the day and I want to break that mold as quick as possible. Um, so that as I'm explaining and they raise their hand, yeah. I can do my spiel of looking around like, you know, and lean over to the kid next to me, like, who's going to call on that person? I don't see a teacher around here, you know? And again, it's, it's seeing how they're reacting to my sense of humor uh, knowing that if they're going to be silly with me, if they're more of a focus group, if they're more, you know, let's, you know, just get down to brass tacks kind of group, um, which is going to help me when I get to my first initiative and whether I'm going to use a nice metaphor and story about hot lava or just you need to get your group from here to there. I'm taking all of that in uh, during the icebreakers. And mm-hmm. Mandy, I want to hear your take on intent. And I'm going to write down the next question. Aha. Uh-huh. Um, all of those things. Yep. All of those are good. Uh, I also, for for me as a facilitator, when I get to be in facilitator mode, um, it's also uh, my chance potentially to play with the group Uh, while I'm doing all those things. (laughs) Well, sorry. Uh, But really, like if I want to get into because, you know, a lot of us do a lot of things. And uh, I think most of us would agree that it's really important to be present with your group. Mm-hmm. And so those name game, name games and icebreakers at the beginning to be able to get yourself involved as well, to be able to push all that other stuff outside of your brain and really be there with your group and, and, and get focused on them. That's one way that I use icebreakers and name games for me. 
um, in, in a in a different sort of way. And then also um, more, a little bit deeper into the assessment thread um, is, uh, for an example, would be actually the name game that we were talking about, the repeater name game, is being able to really spot not just individual behaviors, but um, how the group regards its other members. Because the repeater name game is a really good example of being able to watch and see um, and I'm going to go with kids, you know, but it's true mm -hmm. for adults too, but we see it with kids a lot. Um, which kids are going to be the kids that people giggle at and give hints to when they forget and which kids are the ones that are going to be standing there lost and everybody staring at them and watching them and not giving them help. And um, those sorts of really, really subtle things let you know, okay, where's the core group? Who are the outsiders? You know, all of those, like, what is their group dynamic coming into this? And if you watch during those things, you know, for your assessment, during your name games and things like that, that can really help give you some dirt on what's going on with this particular group of people. So um, that as well. Yeah. You know, and, and going back to some other, um, you know, the other thing that I did not put in this topic, but I think it is in line with what we're talking about when you talk about play is cooperative games too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as I was saying, you know, thinking about traditionally now, I, I wrap all my cooperative games into when I, I'm thinking about it as icebreakers, but, you know, playing tag with a group. And that brings me to the question I was going to ask you guys is, um, do you guys play with the group? Um, I'm going to put the caveat out there that when you, if you say yes or no, you're still managing the risk of the group, but do you still, uh, do you play with the group when you're doing tag or morph or any other icebreaker type games or, or name games? I will usually play with younger kids and I'm, I'm talking like before junior high, third, fourth, fifth grade kids. Um, in order to personally demonstrate uh, one of my full value agreements, which is play safe. Um, so that I can, you know, I'm not running into people knocking them over and I'm demonstrating that to the group. Um, so about that's the only time that I, I actually do the uh, cooperative game play with the kids. How about you, Mandy? I know you talked a little bit about playing, but more specifically, how much do you play with the group during your uh, icebreakers initiatives co-op games? Gosh, everything depends on the group. Everything, I mean, some groups, it's not its not a good fit for yeah, me to jump take, in and play with them. It's take the last group that you did some some of the things we're talking about, you know, either icebreakers or, you know, the last group you worked with. Oh, my gosh. And we won't make it a usual. Now you're, you know, did you play with um, them? Why not? No, actually, actually, no. The last group I, I had to figure out. I should think back and identify the group, man. Um, so the last group that I was with on the course, um, I definitely was the instigator role for them. Um, so I was the the person um, who was very, my role for that day was the troublemaker. Do you want to do it this way or this way? What do you want to do? Let's go, let's play kind of a thing. So the outside voice propelling them to do these things um, um, more present than like the step back facilitator, because that's what this particular group needed. So I didn't, um, I didn't play with this particular group as much as I might with another group of the same age, but my voice was more present um, and, and urging on the play and, yeah. and the yes ands and what else's and, and things like that. So I had sort of a middle, I verbally played. How about that? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, and, and... Hey, I've got a question. Um, I'm wondering how long your programs are and how much of your time do you um, dedicate to name mm -hmm. games and icebreakers? So for me, I tap into when I facilitated the most, which was uh, – at uh, the courses around the Chicago area, and most of them were school groups that would come in for a, when I started, six-hour program, five-hour program, and when I stopped doing it, you know, a lot about maybe three years ago was down to four-hour programs. Um, and 
we were talking a little bit about this with the contract of how I do a lot of icebreakers as I introduce the contract, play, talk a point, play, talk a point. And so for me, if I'm not careful, um, I'll be doing name games and icebreakers up to lunch, which I think is too long, you know, basically an hour and a half out of a four hour program. But what I do find is that when we take the, I mean, it's back to trust the process. A lot of times I get sucked into that time because what I'm picking up from the group is they're not ready yet at a point where I can turn them over to a jump rope or a river or a tennis ball transfer or whatever the initiative is. And so I, there's something in me, the facilitator and voice in me saying, keep going with the games until you see people playing by the rules, following the contract. Um, now, if this group is already a group that's been together, they know each other, I may only spend 20 minutes or, you know, two games where I'll introduce part of the contract. I'll play morph. I'll do the rest of the contract, kind of go into group juggle as agreement to the contract. And we're on and off to the races after 20 minutes. So I'd say with most junior high groups, um, I'm probably doing about 45 minutes of, of intro name game, icebreaker co-op games on a, on a mm -hmm. four to five hour program. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the programs that, that yeah, the programs that we do um, anywhere from um, three hours up to a full day program might be all lows, might be a low high element combination or, you know, any of those mix of things. But if we're going with like the typical um, like fall group initiatives, low course sort of school age group. Um, so about three, four hour program. I'll probably between the intro name games and warm up icebreakers, um, probably about 30 minutes usually. But then like Ed said, um, if they need a little bit more for whatever reason, then they need a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. I think that part of it goes back to the question we were asking before is the intent, because I think about when I'm doing trainings of new facilitators, it, yes, I, I like modeling the way the flow of a program is going to be in sequencing is, mm -hmm. but part of it is I might go maybe a little bit longer in a three day training because I want them to have more in their bag of tricks to choose from. Um, whereas if I'm doing a one day training someplace, I, you know, I've got time for Simon says, uh, as an icebreaker. Um, and I'm also using it as a metaphor to why it's important to follow the directions, make mistakes and ask questions and get the support you need. So really I'm, I'm already off to the races with the icebreaker being a teaching tool. Yeah. And if I'm doing a multi-day training, usually, um, I'll do name games and icebreakers every single morning to yeah, also add to the bag of tricks, um, but also to demonstrate how even with a group that already knows basic information, that these things still have value within their day. Yeah. Um, so, so and that's also a, just to wake the group up again, you know, and make sure that that <laughs> energizers. Yeah. Yes, another great name. So, um, great question, Goose. Thank you. Um, uh, the other thing that I want to spend some time talking about, which I, this is st stepping outside my comfort zone, is one of the things that I put out there is that we would talk about our favorite um, activities for this when we talk about icebreakers and name games. So, um, you know, the reason that it's outside my comfort zone is I would rather us be in a room, being able to stand up, stretch, run around, yeah. play tag, play rock, paper. I mean, we can still play rock, paper, scissors, but... Um, with just three of us, it's it's very hard to play play morph, um, and I'm not sure how much of this is <laughs> transferred uh, over to uh, the real world. Um, so, anyways, uh, but let's give it a try. So, we've talked a lot about name games. We've mentioned a few. Um, so, let's let's finish up with name games. Uh, besides the uh, first name, you know, letter of your name, what are some other of your favorite? What's one of each of your favorite name games? This one's not a game so much, um, and I use this after we've done some warm-ups and, and we're kind of just taking a break from things, um, but it's the activity called mm -hmm. The Story of My Name, uh, where you gather up in a group and you tell people the name that you like to go by and the story behind that. So for me, I could tell you why 
I go by Goose, or I could tell you why I prefer to be called Jeffrey over Jeff. You know, it's it's the name that I want to share with the group. And when you've given that story, then the name becomes harder to forget. Um, someone tells me that you know, they were named after their grandfather, and there's deep meaning behind it. I'm not going to be standing there later on the day saying, oh, what was their name again? Um, because I've got the backstory to it. Yeah. And um, just sort of a, a next level um, version of that for your for your groups that know each other really well. Like I recently did a, a corporate group with people that have been working together for anywhere from seven to 17 years. Um, they had been working together for, I mean, I don't remember the exact time frame, but long span of time. And we actually did uh, middle names um, for that and just switched it up a little bit, um, which was really interesting, too, because when you get that, oh, I got it from my grandfather thing, a lot of middle names um, have family stories that go along with them, too. So for an established group that really does know each other pretty well, jumping to middle names can be a lot of fun for them. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I should do more, more of those. Um, I've gotten away from, from the name stories and that. So this is, this is good stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the things that, that um, I kind of use as a final name uh, game before we move on to contracts or other things is a game called Pikahu, um, where basically mm -hmm. is a tarp. And um, so basically you divide the group into two. <laughs> You put a tarp in between the two of them. So the visual I have is right now, um, I got goose over here. Um, there would be a tarp in between us so we couldn't see each other. Two group members or a facilitator and a teacher are holding up the tarp in between us. And on the count of three, that tarp is lowered. And whichever one of us names the other person first uh, wins the round. So if goose said Ed first, then I would walk with him over to his side of the line. Um, and then it would reset. Um, and I find that as, again, I used to start with that, but again, it seemed unfair to start when, when some people didn't know each other's names and then being put on the spot. And what I see also with that, with assessment is what group is getting creative where all of a sudden they send two people up to the tarp, right. And, <laughs> or who is on their team whispering in their ear and then the other, oh, they're cheating. Well, are, are, are they cheating or, you know, was that in the rules, you know, so thinking outside the box and some other things with that. So that's one that, that I've, I've, I tend to use quite a bit lately that, again, is an energizer kind of fun thing because there's mm -hmm. that big competition involved in it. Yeah, that, that's a lot like name roulette where you uh, have an inner circle and outer circle with everyone's back to each other. And you tell the inner circle to shuffle left, you know, two or three steps. The outer circle shuffle right, two to three steps. Actually, <laughs> go opposite directions. But then you tell them to turn around. Same. Anyway, then, then they, they turn around and it's as quick as you can say the other person's name. Um, and if you don't know each other's names, introduce yourself, shake hands, and then turn back around and you, you call That's the roulette cool. wheel again. Um, the, the one that also reminds me of that I uh, remember learning at my first training is we called it Name Wampum. Um, I have no idea why somebody picked that name, but basically everybody sits down in a circle with their feet out in front of them. And Is there a noodle those. involved? There, well, see, this was back before. <laughs> back in my day, we didn't have noodles. We had socks stuffed with Oh, I was going to thought you were going to say sticks. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> no, those were other people. We weren't allowed to play those anymore. <laughs> but – yeah, basically you take a noodle or something where, and basically it's, and we used to play this and that's the other fun thing is seeing how many games we used to play as kids on the playground work as just great games um, mm -hmm. and getting to introduce some of those to, to new generations. But basically it's, it's name tag, right? So mm -hmm. I say your name start to start Mandy and, or Mandy, I say you're starting and then you say somebody else's name in the circle and I go to hit them with the noodle before they say somebody else's name. Yeah. Um, and you know, you bring up noodles. Oh, go ahead. Hey, any activity, any activity that requires or allows you to hit somebody with a noodle is always a success with yeah, any, I, age I agree any age group. I heartedly, but I do know, and one of them may be somebody that's, uh, watching, um, from the website that does not agree, uh, necessarily finds, and that, that could be, I, I might get them on and maybe we could have a good, uh, debate whether uh, noodles promote violence 
or promote fun um, or both. <laughs> ah, yeah. I'm not saying it. I'm saying it, people like them. That's all I'm saying. I've never had a group not enjoy. Well, wampin here's the other thing I do, noodle. and this is another one: uh, sword in the stone that involves wampin people with noodles. And um, when it's basically duck, duck, goose, right? To start off with, there's a, a drain. Wish I had one. Uh, imagine like a drain pipe where the noodle. This is the resting part. There we go. Visuals. So if this is a noodle and a like a drain tile that you put in the center of the circle. I'm the swords person. I walk around the outside of the circle basically doing duck, duck, goose with it. But I don't say that. So I'm basically going around. And when I see somebody that's unsavory to the kingdom, I womp them with a noodle, right? <laughs> and then I have to run back and I have to place the noodle. And you can see, even with a pen in my slinky, imagine this on a windy day, I place the noodle on the, uh, the stone. And so the name of the game is the sword and the stone. I didn't realize I was going to be explaining the whole thing here. So the sword is on the stone. Um, and if any time the sword falls off the stone, everybody must in the circle salute and in their best out loud authoritative voice yell, hark, the sword is off the stone. And at that point, whoever touched the stone last is responsible to come and put the sword back on the stone. So if I was it, I want, I expected the pen to actually go over and hit goose. And, and I hit him with it, <laughs> then I come over and I'm sloppy with it and I drop it. Everybody is sitting there going, harken, and I got to come back, put this on. And here's the, the point is that now Goose has to pick up the sword and tag me with it before I get back to the spot he was in. So if I'm sloppy and drop the sword. So anyways, you're getting a full explanation here of the game. But one of the things that I notice with the groups I work with is that some of them do not like the idea of being smacked with the sword. So I, I asked the group, I'm like, who do you think is the biggest, strongest person in your group? And so they pick the linebacker kid in the group, right? And I hand him the, the noodle and I stand there and I say, what I'd like you to do so I can show everybody that noodle doesn't really hurt that much is hit me as hard as you can. And again, some of them will come up and they'll just want me as hard as they can. And every time, no matter how hard they hit me, um, again, uh, covered this in previous blabs, passive aggressive facilitator. I will say something <laughs> along the lines of really, dude, I told you to hit me as hard as you can. And that usually gets them in the full, full swing. And yes, it has stung me a couple times, but they do not swing that hard while running at each other versus in a standing still baseball swing. But again, to show them that this is, we right. talked about safety today. And again, this is, I'm not in pain, but again, if this is something that's not working for you, then we go back to our talk about contract. But that's one of the things that I do with the noodle. But again, back to intent, I love this one if a group is going to be talking about risk taking the day, real versus perceived risk. And on top of it, um, just seeing who's going to be silly. And also it's tag. So you get your clicks out of the way right off the bat, because with this game, since it's tag, you could get the same three kids tagging each other. And Again, if anybody wants, I can find a write-up. There are like three levels that you go on and the risk gets higher and higher, switching places with people. And my favorite is at the end, running out to the center, putting your head above the sword and saying, I have no fear, there is no stone, um, all while you could get whacked with the sword. Um, so there, <laughs> I said we were going to share some of our favorites. That's one of my favorites there, but a lot of tangents with that one. So thanks for everybody sticking with me on that. Ed, uh, there's a... There's a uh, I know that game by SWAT tag. Uh, it's one game I always play with the groups because I love it so much. Uh, I tend to play with younger kids and um, we use it with the full value agreement of playing safe. And um, so each level that you introduce, uh, you know, the game gets more fun as you go along. Um, before we go into each le level, I'm asking the group, have you played safe? Have you played fair? Um, and when they all agree that they have, then I can introduce the next element. Yeah, and you know what? I think that this goes back to the intent conversation that we're having that, um, you know, I'm using the, the, the intention of my icebreakers is really where are we at with the contract? Um, because once I'm seeing the contract being, yeah. um, you know, being followed by everybody, that goes back to the question you asked earlier. How long do we go with this? Well, if they're being safe, they're being respectful. 
Um, they're, they're being committed in the way of they're not, you know, they're finding ways, even like if it's an elimination tag game to still cheer each other on, stay active in the game in some way, then really we're good. We've had some fun. Um, we know some names. Now let's see if we can keep this all going as I move into the next level of the sequence, when I'm going to start to give you some, some things you're going to have to think about, you know, and do some, some more, um, you know, some more physical challenges or, or even mind challenges before we move forward. Um, because if I got you breaking the rules in, in, in morph or, you know, a tag game, um, chances are you're going to break the rules when we move on to river crossing or group juggle. No. <laughs> I, I tell my kids all the time, I'll take you as far as you let me. Um, but if I can't trust you with the little activities, there's no way I'm going to take you over there to the nitro crossing or we're not going to go over the wall. If I think that you're going to find it right. funny to watch somebody fall. Um, and so I, I, my kids hear me say all the time, I take you as right. far as you let me, you know, and, and with that, the other thing that I've used icebreakers and that for is I come back down the sequence. So let's say everything's going great. You know, we have a challenge, we eat lunch, we have another challenge. And then somewhere, you know, we're now getting into um, uh, totally distracted. I'm going to totally answer that uh, in a second. <laughs> uh, let me just finish this one thought. Um, I knew that would throw you. Good I know. Job, Do not host these things if you have ADD. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways. Okay, so finish your thoughts and we can get to that. Thought. <laughs> so my thought is that one of the things is that they're showing me is let's say frustration is high. And yes, we're near the storming level, depending on the group and how much time I, I have with them. One of the things I might do is go back to, and this is something I learned when I was working with Cub Scouts, stop the games when they're still having fun. Right. So if we were playing um, some, you know, another one is, is rope hand tag. Everybody hand, holds on to a piece of webbing. Somebody's in the middle and they try and tag hands. That is a great one then for me to pull off of whale watch if it's falling apart and say, look, we're just going to take a quick break. You guys remember rope hand tag earlier? Yeah, we love that one. All right, let's do that. And it kind of resets, you know, and, and that's when I started really understanding when people said that we sequence activities. Well, if we're trying to take them up a staircase, if you look at it that way, and they're getting ready to fall off this, well, let's bring it down a step and get back to mm -hmm. where we're good build on those skills and then see what skills we need to move back into that. So that was my thought yeah. on that. So have you ever played the name game, me, you, you, me? No. So I'm going to invite you to jump in that open seat and explain to me how we do it. <laughs> yeah. Jump at the open seat. <laughs> We're facilitators. We'll sit here and win. Come on, Veronica, jump in What's there. that? Okay. You're missing this, what'd you say? Ah. Yeah. No, I, I so really I jump a in new there. trick with this is that because I've been in this situation too where I jump on a blab and I make a comment and I just am in new condition to jump on camera. Um, whether or not I feel comfortable or not, I'm just not, it's not a good time. So thank you. I was going to say the new thing that I need to remember is invite people in. And then after that quick moment of silence, we do as facilitators, just, hey, give me a Y or an N if you'd like to jump in, because some people are trying to get their internet to rev up. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, as long as you're not on 3G, it usually works. And again, it's, it's, it's a fun group, so we can always have you jump in if it's not working, so it didn't work. Uh, take a risk, yeah. as, as I heard. Uh, were you there when yes. Rocky said that, Goose? That's another we story. Love risk. So. Can I uh, promote a book? Not mine. So the question is, is that anything like you mean left and right? Mandy, you're turning into the robot again. <gasps> oh, no. Is the voice <laughs> robotic? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you just do a quick refresh? Ooh. So, yeah, all good. right. So is the, um, is the, you, where is it? The me, you, you, me, is that anything like you, me, left, right? Okay. I don't, yeah, I can so. hear you. Okay. Are you You're able to up me? for a little bit, but I can hear you pretty good now. Hey, so no props okay. by project adventure. Um, it has that gate. You, me, me, you in there. Um, I haven't played it in years, so I can't remember exactly 
Great. On page 48 of the book. And then if anybody that's in the chat that can multitask, I've learned better than to try it myself while hosting and can find like a link on Amazon or Product Adventures website or something like that, go ahead and throw the link. Just copy and paste the, you can hit a new tab and then just copy and paste it um, back in there and that way we can have it. We did that for uh, a book last week. Seems to work well. Cool. I'll look that up. The, the gist of the guy going to um, you and I go and shake hands, and we, I say, you say Ed, I say Goose, we shake hands. Now, when I go to Mandy, I don't say Goose, I say Ed, and she says Mandy. And then when I go to the next person, maybe I come back to you, I say Mandy. And so we're using other people's names to introduce Which I love it when around. groups point out that this is a horrible way to na learn names. Uh, which makes just cracks me up because they're like, this is so confusing. I'm like, just, you know, just trust the process. Let's play. It's good. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, that, that sounds extremely confusing in my head. And what it reminds me of is another one that maybe the two of you can explain to me the point of, because I played it in my training and then never, ever did it with a group, which is, this is a rock. Oh, is that like uh witch watch? I don't know. This, this is, is a, a witch. Rock. A what? A, a witch. Rock. Thank you. And then oh you have my gosh. On the other I way. love that game. I don't understand it. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this. Do you play it one direction only or do you send a second object going around the other way? Again, 1995 training at the York. <laughs> they did it with a roll of duct tape and a pair of scissors. Okay. So two objects. All right. rock, and I don't remember what the other thing was. And I didn't get it. It confused me. I just wanted to be done with it. So I never bothered to really learn it. And every once in a while, I'll see a group playing. I'm like, well, they look like they have, they're having fun. Okay. But I don't so get it. Let me tell you about, I love, I love Witch Watch, which is uh, how I learned it. And for the way that I play it, I have two objects. And no matter what those two objects are, one is a witch and one is a watch. All right. So let's, let's get my Eclipse Gum. And my phone here. So we're envisioning the circle going out and around me this way, right? So I always start off with passing to my uh, left. And I say, this is a witch. And they have to say back, a what? And I say, a witch. And they have to say thank you before I hand it to them. The thank you is important because manners are important. Uh, and it's part of the cadence of what we go. So then they turn to the person to their left. And they um, say, this is a witch. And that person says, a what? But that person has to turn back to me because nobody remembers what this is. So it always goes back to me. A what? And I say a witch. And they turn around and they say a witch. And then the other person says, thank you. And it goes back around. So they go to pass to the third person. This is a witch. A what? A what? A what? And I say a witch. A witch. A witch. Thank you. And it passes on. Right. So you have that constantly going back to the facilitator. And then once they get going on that, um, a lot of times I won't make it obvious that I have the second object. But then I don't even give any intro. I just turn to the person on my right and I pass. I just hold the thing out to them and I say, this is a watch. And they, everybody goes, ah, and um, and then. You know, I sort of stare at them and smile until they get it and they go, oh, what? And I say, oh, watch. And so then we've got all the witches going around the circle uh, clockwise. We have all the watches going around the circle counterclockwise. The funnest part, though, uh, as a facilitator, when you're doing this game is you don't have to do anything. I mean, you have to monitor your group to make sure that nothing's no one's going to explode. Right. <laughs> uh, but like to facilitate this game, once you get the objects going, all you have to do is remember, you always say a oh, which when it comes from your left and you always say a watch when it comes from your right. So when you hear a what, you go a witch. When you hear a what, you go a watch. And that's all you have to do. And then you just enjoy the chaos in the process. But you have to be careful who you put in about the middle of the circle across from you, because those people are going to really be the yeah. first people that encounter that double slam of communication coming from either side. Yeah, guess where um, I was the first time I played. Yeah, I know. I can guess. But it's a really... I learned uh -huh. that game at a workshop. And, and it was... We had two markers. We had a red marker and a blue marker. And the red marker was a red bing. And I don't know why the blue Wait, marker... What was, was the, the red marker ball. you dropped out for a second? And... Uh, 
a red bing, oh, and a blue bong. bong. <laughs> and um, it, uh, yeah, that was, I took that class about 14 years yeah. ago. And I still can yeah, I think it. it's a, it's a great game. It gets, um, as long as your group, um, is it having severe communication problems um, or you don't have a couple of people that are really at a high frustration level and ready to check out? Um, it's a it's a great one. It definitely wouldn't fall um, for most of the groups unless they're pretty high functioning. Wouldn't fall into an icebreaker category for me, though, um, yeah. because usually there is a little bit of problem solving within the group as far as how they're going to um, handle that, that communication bombard bombardment. So it's not, uh, it's not necessarily a high level activity for most groups, but I wouldn't qualify it as an icebreaker personally. Gotcha. Well, yeah. And also I can see that that's where you want, because anything that involves some type of rhythm with a group, I find if I start with one of those, there isn't mm. the buy-in yet where if you're doing, um, I learned a team as a, uh, big booty but uh we call it big rudy just so i don't get looks from teachers where it's one of the, it's like four square right where it's you know slant and then one to the five five to the one one to the two and so but again that's another actually uh, i wanted to apologize it looked like um for a second there uh let's see who was it uh gershon gordon was gonna jump in and i was trying to hover over and i hope i didn't x you out so if you wanted to jump back in, please feel free. We still have uh, uh, about 10 minutes left. Um, so, and also very curious if I'm appreciating people in the uh, the uh, comments here, jumping in and giving us uh, some other games to think about here too. Um, so. I have heard several versions of Witch Watch that involve some mention of a duck. Um, so yes, and hi, Marin and Evan. <laughs> nice. Marin and Evan should jump in. You guys yeah. should jump in. Join us. Talk about some name games. Yeah. I know you have some. Yes, please do. Yeah. So, um, okay. yay! I'll let All you right. know. Because when I click on people, they disappear somehow. <laughs> Don't do that. Hey, somebody's coming right. Working on it, working on it. Hi! There we go. While she's loading in, hey, um, I like uh, high five mingles as a nice warm up with the. Uh... Well, there's two people. Yeah, two for the price of one. Yeah, we got a two for and two fabulous, wonderful people. I might add that I love dearly. <laughs> we have five people in our lab. That's one more than yeah. four. <laughs> It's the trust facilitators to figure out how to how to get five people on the lab. <laughs> right. oh, that's great. All right, guys, throw out your your name game or icebreakers. Oh, I like my deck of cards that has um, problem solving questions and icebreaker questions, so I can use it during their uh, process. Nice. Nice. So it's like weird questions, like, if we had a holiday for you, what would we do? And my favorite answer so far is everybody would get a llama. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and did you did you make them or buy them? I made them out of a deck of cards, and then I just Yay! cut and glued on them. <laughs> Meredith is, is an excellent arts person. She makes That's all sorts idea. of wonderful things. And then I use the office's lamination paper, and now they are waterproof. <laughs> She's also resourceful and practical. <laughs> I mean, I'm it. It. It yeah, did you guys talk about like a, a thumb ball or a thumb chicken or anything like that yet? No, talk no. about a thumb chicken. Yeah, so, I know thumb ball, but uh, yeah, tell us more about the chicken. It's just a rubber chicken <laughs> instead of a ball. That you have all the all the things written on, so you have little uh, little questions or little like things that they should do, like um, dance break or um, you know what was your favorite vacation written on it. And when they you throw it around the circle, and when they catch it, whatever their thumb is on or the thumb is closest to, that's what they act out or answer the question to. Yeah, um, and that one's pretty fun. It loosens yeah. people up. 
Yeah. yeah. So for those that are like, what? That's still a little bit lost. Exact same thing as a, as a thumb ball, but you take a Sharpie, you take fine point Sharpies <laughs> and rubber chicken and you write little word blobs all over the chicken. So everybody loves to write rubber chickens. And yeah, yeah. rubber it's chickens with like... dance breaks. I mean, come on. I was looking for my <laughs> thumb ball for people that didn't know what it was. So, uh, well, we just covered it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I said, nice. I'm very, I, I'm an experiential learner myself. So I like to have stuff for, that we can play with while we're doing the lab too. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Keep the ball and use those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the other one? I lost my train of thought because I went to look for my thumb ball. Oh, well. All right. Well, you know uh, what's, what's always fun for an icebreaker for a group of adults, especially a group of facilitators, because most of us know this, um, is what is your superpower? I'm a child whisperer. <laughs> So you can play this two ways. Either you you share your superpower that you genuinely have in real life, like Marin the Child Whisperer, true story. Um, or if you could have a superpower, if you decided you were a superhero and you wanted, you know, a, one of the more traditional superpowers, what would your superpower be? Hmm. So so Marin's natural superpower is Child Whisperer. Um, what would your uh, more traditional superpower be if you had one? Uh, the powers of Jesus, the healing powers of Jesus. Nice. Very good. Very good. Uh, <laughs> Evan. Uh, <laughs> the ability to steal other people's superpowers so that I don't have to think of them. Are you a That's fan of heroes? Yeah, it was, it was cool. <laughs> okay, so, but but this is what just happened there, and I didn't do it intentionally, but I just realized is another reason that we do the icebreakers, and I'm glad that the two of you jumped in here because we weren't mm -hmm. talking about the traditional icebreaker questions also, because the second you said, I I want to steal other people's uh, powers, it instantly, I want to have a conversation with you, do you watch the TV show Heroes? Because there's a character on there that does that. And they've revamped it. And, you know, now all of a sudden there's this connection, potential connection between us that I want to, even when we're, you know, if we're out with a group, now I want to pull you to the side and have this conversation with, which again, back to the intent of icebreakers is to get people to know each other. So, yes, I agree, Goose, by the way, that we do need to have a blab on the diminished quality of chickens. Mine keep on melting in my trunk and sticking to themselves. That used to never happen. Um <laughs> But and they, they used, they, they, thanks very much for that they, note about they, they, the, they, they, the uh, print and play from High Five Adventure Learning. Um, I just dropped a link into the comments. So if anybody wants to download that from High Five. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the other thing that I was thinking about doing is um, starting my blabs five minutes early with icebreaker questions. You know, yeah. just – Throwing it out there, the, the hard part, and I don't know that and maybe in the future we'll start doing this. Um, I, I mean, I feel like a huge success today. We've got a full house for the first time, and we've got more than a full house. Um, so maybe we can start start doing that where, um, you know, I'll show up five minutes early and we can have somebody throw an icebreaker question in the, the comments, um, you know, and just, you know, do the thing that we're good at and start having conversations. I mean, that's one of the things I keep on hearing when I watch other blabs is this is a community that over here. So what would we do if we're building a, you know, um, a community? Yes. ADD kicked in and I was reading the comments. Sorry. <laughs> uh -huh. So um, I dropped in underneath the high five link. I dropped in a link to uh, a short article on the one question, all successful people can answer immediately. Uh, which rolls back to the superpower question, which is really interesting because it's it's all about um, do you know what your strengths are? Mm. <laughs> so, it's, you know, Evan's strength is stealing. <laughs> <laughs> or at least finding the most efficient way to get things done. Let's say it that way. <laughs> yeah. ah. Nice. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do a quick wrap up uh, exit and we'll we'll stop the recording. And if we want to keep on going for a little bit, we can. And I do know that uh, I did see some notes going by that somebody else wanted to jump in and tell us about a game also. But um, just for the recording aspect, I'm going to cut it at about an hour here.
So, uh, but before I do stop the recording, I want to thank uh, everybody for jumping okay. in today. Everybody for being part of this. Thanks. Welcome to the uh, summer camp pros uh, posted over there. That's a new group that I'm starting to, to, to get involved with and look at. So welcome you guys too. Thanks for everybody coming. And uh, if you have an idea for a blab, um, you know, we already got the chickens one, another one I'm kicking around. Uh, you can let me know is, uh, out of our conversation today is what activities do you not like facilitating? Cause you know, you guys were telling me about, this is a rock and there's a couple that I, I think have been in my past that I was able to figure out how to facilitate. So again, that's an idea I'm kicking around, but if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments here. Uh, even after we stop recording, uh, even if you're watching the replay, uh, if you're logged on Blab, or you can email me at experiential at gmail.com. So thanks again for everybody uh, joining us today. Um, hey, the daytime people are pulling their weight. So um, I'm seeing another daytime one <laughs> in our future here. So, you know what? yep. Thanks everybody and for being here. And I'm, oh, make, yes. Before well, I pause, before I, I pause. Can I, can I, can I make a, a brief request mm -hmm. um, that we extend the recording time by like maybe two minutes and that we each go around because I feel like we didn't get a lot of um, as many games out as I think that a lot of people would have liked. So could we like take 30 seconds each and just throw out one more thing? Yeah. You know what? Let's even do for a name, name game or an icebreaker. Whoops, where'd they go? Come back. Um, <laughs> yeah, let, let, if people are willing, I'll keep the recording going and we'll keep a seat rotating. So um after when we've got a seat open, so each one of us will give our favorite and we'll just give a name. Like you said, 30 seconds. Whoever's not talking is responsible to tell us we got 20, you know, 10 seconds left to wrap it up. And then if somebody wants to pop in the seat and just give theirs quick, we'll record it and then uh, um, we'll stop the recording. So, all right. All right. I will set I've a already timer. Told, like, I'm four, setting a timer. So I'm not going to give any more at this point. <laughs> so, Mandy or Goose, go for it. Um. I like a high five mingle. Uh, it's a high five adventures activity. Um, Jen Stanfield has it in uh, her book on um, on Great. processing. Good. You have thirteen seconds left. <laughs> you get a second one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what one you got, Mandy? Uh, okay, so I have two really basic ones, but they're good for groups that need to move. And it's just a basic either name, sh uh, action, shout back. You say your name, you do some sort of action, and then everybody says in the circle says the name, does the action back at you. So everybody's moving and repeating the name. And it's great for groups it's, uh, that need to move. And then uh, another version of that is a name action wave where um, I say my name, I do my action, I pass it to my right. That person says my name, does my action, goes all the way around the circle with everybody saying my name, doing my action, lands with me. I say my name and uh, do my action one more time and then it immediately goes to my right where that person says their name, does their action, and goes all the way around the circle with the goal being we're continuing the name and actions for everyone in the group in a continuous wave with no breaks. Um, with that one, you could either say it has to be something um, that everyone in the group can do for an action, or if it's appropriate for the group, you can also say it has to be, uh, well, you need to say if it's something that not everyone can do, then everyone has to figure out the safest way that they can imitate that action for them. So if somebody does a back tuck because they're a gymnast, then somebody just does an imitation of a back tuck or a, like a back roll on the ground or, you know, whatever it is. So those are two really basic ones that um, I like to make sure that we have name game options that involve a lot of movement, a lot of body movement. Maybe longer than 60 seconds, sorry, or 30 seconds, sorry. That's okay. All right. Seat is open. Somebody mm. jump. Tell us another one. Ubuntu cards. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Goose, for stopping by. All right. Seat All is right. Open. Ubuntu cards are good. Um, the handshakes game, definitely. Yep. Hey, ah, really? yay! Jump in, Joe. Great. Sweet. So um, the different versions of the handshakes game are awesome, especially when you get the goofy handshakes. And then later on, how we were talking about bringing those things back into the sequence, uh, being able to find your high five partner or be able to find your uh, blow it up partner hey. or whatever it is. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Ah, I'm doing great. How are you? 
not bad. Not bad. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you great. Excellent. Excellent. So I wanted to, to chime in for a second. My favorite, I wasn't, I was thinking back to the icebreakers, not the, the name games. My favorite icebreaker of all time is a game called Pass the Snort. Okay. Are either of you guys familiar with was, Pass was the this Snort? Developed in the 80s? <laughs> no, that's a different game. It's not that kind of snort. <laughs> it's not that kind of snort. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, I, I lost track of how many times I did it as an opening icebreaker this last season at the park. It's basically an elimination game where you try to make people smile or laugh by looking at them and snorting. Ah, nice. And if they smile or they laugh, they're out of the circle, and the circle becomes smaller and smaller until there's only one or two people left. And then we find out who the intergalactic champion of past the snort really is. Nice. That's the game. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. And I have not forgot about your topic that you suggested a couple of weeks ago of um, uh, what was it with the, yeah, I didn't forget about it. What was it? Um, when you have a <laughs> recreational program and you want to offer more uh, in-depth team building type uh, programs at the recreational program. Yes, correct? exactly. How could you take yeah. a six line zip tour and make it more experiential? Yeah, how I could would, you I would how could you incorporate the concept of a group contract into something like a zip tour or like an aerial challenge course? Great conversation. Yeah. Great I think conversation. So. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, look at that. I just got kudos. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> they're props. I'll give you props too. Yes. Okay, we're, we're props. yes. We're using oh, our, you're our official tech technical terminology here. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I've been on for on. like two seconds, and I got Thank more than everybody. <laughs> combined. Everybody combined. <laughs> nice. All right. Very cool. All right. And uh, we still have a seat open if somebody else wants to jump in. <laughs> no no fishing for props. <laughs> All right. Now you're just diluting the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, now it's it, is, it is what it is. Okay. You know, but the other thing now I want to do is, is – um, you know, I'm trying to get a lot of, you know, our field and our facilitator friends over on Blab. But one of the things somebody on Blab pointed out is there already is a Blab community. So are there people here that, you know, we can draw into what we do? And what I'd love to do is do a pass the snort Blab, right? So you start with, oh my gosh, people, you explain the rules. And then when somebody laughs, they're out. And you and you have somebody be a co-host. Look at this. I'm always coming up with new games, right? Nothing original. Just how do we modify this game, right? So, like uh, Goose would be. It's like you wrote a book on how to tweak activities <laughs> or something. I don't know. <laughs> so you put, you put a host in the um, you put a host in in the uh, comments, so they're not on, so they can be impartial because they have the power okay. to act somebody out, right? And as soon as that person. Okay that somebody has wow you got a you got like there's a nice cover on that one and all um oh uh, yeah <laughs> so as soon as they see somebody laugh they they boot them off the seat opens up and somebody else comes in you know we could so do el elimination games on blab because i'm seeing people do open mic nights and blab's got talent so why aren't we doing like some of our games on blab that'd be cool and something else that I can throw out there for you. It's a great game. I've done a write-up on it on a one-page uh, piece of paper. I could either send it directly to you, Ed, or I could just have people contact me through Twitter to somehow get it in their hands. If they want a copy of it in their hands, that would be great. And, um, yeah, any support. If any support you, that I could if offer. If you email it to me, um, I'll put it on the um... – on the replay on my blog, all the blabs are replayed. So I'll put it there. And then I have a section on my uh, website that's handouts from conferences and things like that. So whatever works okay. easiest for people, if you email me a copy, I'll put it up there. And then people can also just direct message you also. Sweet. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling an experiential Ed Blab Pinterest board like coming up oh, too. That's awesome. I okay yep. great. I've been wanting to do Come a blab on. board, but now and then I will I will start a blab board all on of, Pinterest. All of these links that we're putting in there, and then resources like Joe's offering would be awesome to put on. A and Pinterest then I can board. do a pin for it also. Awesome. Yeah. Always thinking we are. That is so dangerous. 
<laughs> All right. At this yes. time, we are at 140. So I am going to, um, I feel that the seat okay. has been open there long enough. So uh, thanks again for everybody that jumped in. I'm going to stop recording, but we'll keep on chatting just for a little bit. But thanks again, everybody. And, um, you know, follow best place to hear when the next Blab is either uh, follow me on Blab at blab.im slash experiential ed, no E. Um, I'll put that in the, uh, the chat here in a second, um, or on Twitter. Those are the easiest ways to find out what I'm doing on blab. And if you follow me on anything else, I'm plastering it all over. Um, uh, cause this was a lot of fun today. So thanks everybody for coming in. And, uh, uh, thanks again, Mandy, for being my co-host Joe. Thanks for jumping on goose and everybody else that jumped in here. Thanks. And we'll see you next time. Meredith Evans. Yay.